donkey. So um, it's obviously a, a piece of music that very clearly represents all these animals. And then you have this movement called the pianists. And I'd love to have met the piano players that he worked with. Um, I think they, they must have been a lot of fun, judging by that movement. Um, anyway, so uh, the swan was the only really sort of serious movement in this piece. <coughs> And uh, he absolutely forbade anyone to play it ever again or to uh, publish it while he was alive. Um, apart from the swan, it was the only movie he would let anyone play. Um, and then he his will, he finally <laughs> relented and said, okay, now you can publish it, now you can perform it. And I'm really pleased because I don't know how many of us are here, but I know for myself, for a lot of my friends, the Carnival of the Animals was the first classical music we really ever heard when we were really little. Um, so, so I'm really pleased that we published it. Um, I have two lovely sisters, and they both have little children who are adorable. And um, Esme, when she was about five years old, came to a concert that I did, and her uh, her mum, my sister Louise, um, gave her lots of paper and colouring pens and said, you've got to keep really quiet. And she just fell in love with this piece of music, this one, and drew me a lovely picture that I've still got about it. And I described it to the audience. Um, the melody is, is rather beautiful. It's actually in the shape of the swan. So you have the head and the neck, and then you have the back, and then the tail feathers just gently going up at the end. Um, so I have to be the, the elegant top of the swan, just floating, gliding on the water. And the piano player, um, if you could see his fingers, you could watch, and you see that he's, he's like the feet paddling madly. He's doing all the hard work underneath. So it's the swan, like, come on, swan, swan. Mm -hmm. 